How does gravity work? Will we ever figure it out? Many brains have tried to explain it. Over 400 years ago, there was Isaac Newton. He thought gravity had something to do with mass. Then, 300 years later, there was Albert Einstein. He thought that gravity was the produce of the flexions of space-time by massive objects. But that was then, before we went to the moon. Now we know that objects in outer space experience weightlessness. Aren't all the bodies performing gravity suspended in space and experiencing weightlessness? How could a suspended and weightless body produce a depression in a virtual trampoline? Come on, Albert! Let me tell you about relativity. It is relatively impossible that weightlessness could produce a depression anywhere. Let's think some more. Thousands of brains have tried to explain gravity. Today, quantum theory is trying to find an explanation in particles. Thousands of brains and billions of dollars. And still, nothing yet. Scientifically, there are only two things we know for sure. We know that relativity and quantum theory are incompatible, and we also know that there is nothing we know for sure. But there are a few things we already discovered in our first video about gravity. The first is that only three elements of reality can be confirmed to exist. They are matter, movement, and space. The second is that ancestors and descendants always have resembling appearances. And finally, we discovered that a vertical fall was only an illusion. We discovered that at the 45th parallel, a one-second fall was traveling 333 meters towards the east, making the trajectory describe a long arc that had 34 times more horizontal travel than it had vertical drop. That made us realize that the principles of gravity may have something to do with the spiral shape of galaxies, and that the principles engendering a trajectory made of velocity and curve may also involve velocity and curve, since descendants always resemble their ancestors. But, there were still no mechanical explanations. Here they are. Gravity is a drawing force. Just like that. The spoon experiment shows a drawing force. Just like that. There has been many speculations trying to explain gravity, but none of them has looked at it from a global point of view. Since matter, movement and space are the only things that can be confirmed to exist in reality, their interaction may contain the solution, and the explanation that follows will only consider that interaction. When I pull on the piston of the syringe, it creates a depression. The depression is a drawing force. Note here that the syringe is made of matter, and the movement of the piston in space confirms the interaction between the three confirmed element of reality. The depression was the produce of volume expansion. See the internal volume being expanded.
even if I don't block the orifice, it still works. When I pull on the piston, it creates a drawing force, and in this case, it draws air. Because air is invisible, it may not be very convincing. So I will try it with water instead, so you can see. Note again, that without the interaction, nothing happens. Only when matter, movement and space interact, is there something, is there a drawing force. Albert was right. Gravity is produced by depressions, but not caused by mass. The depressions are caused by spin. Here's how it goes. Here, at the 45th parallel, the Earth's crust travel one kilometer every three seconds. 333 meters per second. If I feel no wind, it means that even the atmosphere is traveling east at 333 meters per second. The Earth carries its atmosphere with its spin. While atmospheric units of volume are carried by the spin, they enter areas that are greater than their own volume. Due to the sloping away of the surface. This is a case of volume expansion. The depression has the power to draw the atmospheric unit of volume towards the surface. And flex it. This is also what happens in the spoon experiment when the stream of water passes the summit of the convexity of the spoon. Volume expansion, depression, drawing force, and flexion of the stream. When that happens in the spoon experiment, it produces lift. Here is why. The flexion of the passing units of volume produce another depression through volume expansion. When the flexion happens, the convexity is elongated, making it become at a lower density than the, the its opposite concave side. This elongation is another form of depression. Volume expansion, depression, lift. In the case of a spinning body, lift is now the outcome. And here is why. It is very simple. Depressions from volume expansion happen all around the sphere. Drawing forces also happen all around. And finally, Flexions happen all around. Even though all flexions reduce the density of their convexities,
lift is impossible because there are opposing lifts for on the opposite side cancelling out. Lift is therefore impossible. Instead, each flex unit of volume becomes active of a depression at the above layer of the atmosphere between its convexity and the above passing unit of volume. The depressions have the power to draw and flex the next layer of atmosphere. This goes on, and on, and on, and on. Each above drawing force is added to all the forces situated below. We end up in a situation where close to the center of spin more forces are accumulated and active, producing a higher density from external pressure, and away from the center, less forces are accumulated and active, producing a lower density. The final result is a dense compressed material center of spin and a decreasing density with altitude. Note here that none of that would have happened if matter was not spinning in space. There would have been no depressions from volume expansion. There would have been no drawing forces. There would be no gravity. In fact, this is how magnetism operates at all scales. The size of a material spinning nucleus is irrelevant. You know, we are used to believe that gravity is a force that attracts objects to the ground. It is true sometimes, but it is not a full view of reality. Gravity can attract in all directions. It attracts objects to their density equilibrium. Everything is attracted to a layer in the system that is equal in density to its own. Gravity or magnetism can produce rise, fall, or stagnation. You see what I mean? In this universe, where matter, movement, and space are the three only elements confirmed to coexist, magnetism is a dynamic principle. Finally, we can think about something else.